Chapter 18. Bryce and Sarah Ruth had a father. Early the next morning, when the light was grey and uncertain, Sarah Ruth was sitting up in bed, coughing, and the father came home. He picked Edward up by one of his ears and said, I ain't never. It's a baby doll, said Bryce. Don't look like no baby doll to me. Edward, hanging by one ear, was frightened. This, he was certain, was the man who crushed the heads of China dolls. Jangles, said Sarah Ruth, between coughs. She held out her arms. He's hers, said Bryce. He belongs to her. The father dropped Edward on the bed, and Bryce picked up the rabbit and handed him to Sarah Ruth. It don't matter anyway said the father. It don't make no difference. None of it. It does so matter, said Bryce. Don't you sass me, said the father. He raised his hand and slapped Bryce across his mouth, and then he turned and left the house. You ain't got to worry about him, said Bryce to Edward. He ain't nothing but a bully, and besides... He don't hardly ever come home. Fortunately, the father did not come back that day. Bryce went out to work and Sarah Ruth spent the day in bed, holding Edward in her lap and playing with a box filled with buttons. Pretty, she said to Edward as she lined up the buttons on the bed and arranged them into different patterns. Sometimes when a a coughing fit was particularly bad, she squeezed Edward so tight that he was afraid he would crack in two. Also, in between coughing fits, she took to sucking on one or the other of Edward's ears. Normally, Edward would have found intrusive clingy behaviour of this sort very annoying, but there was something about Sarah Ruth. He wanted to take care of her. He wanted to protect her. He wanted to do more for her. At the end of the day, Bryce returned with a biscuit for Sarah Ruth and a ball of twine for Edward. Sarah Ruth held the biscuit in both hands and took small, tentative bites. You eat that all up, honey. Let me hold Jangle, said Bryce. Him and me got a surprise for you. Bryce took Edward off to a corner of the room and with his pocket knife, He cut off lengths of twine and tied them to Edward's arms and feet and then tied the twine to sticks of wood. See, all day, I've been thinking about it, Bryce said. What we're going to do is make you dance. Sarah Ruth loves dancing. Mama used to hold on to her and dance her around the room. You eating that biscuit? Bryce called out to Sarah Ruth. "Uh Uh-huh said Sarah Ruth. You hold on, honey. We got a surprise for you. Bryce stood up. Close your eyes, he told her. He took Edward over to the bed and said, Okay, you can open them now. Sarah Ruth opened her eyes. Dance, Jangles, said Bryce. And then moving the strings with the sticks with one hand, Bryce made Edward dance and drop and sway, and the whole while, at the same time, with his other hand, he held on. He held on to the harmonica and played a bright and lively tune. Sarah Ruth laughed. She laughed until she started to cough, and then Bryce laid Edward down and took Sarah Ruth in his lap and rocked her and rubbed her back. "You want some fresh air?" he asked her. Let's get you out of this nasty old air, huh? Bryce carried his sister outside. He left Edward lying on the bed and the rabbit staring up at the smoke-stained ceiling thought again about having wings. If he had them, he thought, he would fly high above the world to where the air was clear and sweet. He would take Sarah Ruth with him. He would carry her in his arms. Surely, so high above the world, She would be able to breathe without coughing. After a minute, Bryce came back inside, still carrying Sarah Ruth. 
She wants you too, he said. Jangles, said Sarah Ruth. She held out her arms. So Bryce held Sarah Ruth and Sarah Ruth held Edward and the three of them stood outside. Bryce said, you got to look for falling stars. Them are the ones with magic. They were quiet for a long time, all three of them looking up at the sky. Sarah Ruth stopped coughing. Edward thought that maybe she'd fallen asleep. There, she said, and she pointed to a star streaking through the night sky. Make a wish, honey, Bryce said, his voice high and tight. That's your star. You make a wish for anything you want. And even though it was Sarah Ruth's star, Edward wished on it too. Chapter 19 The days passed, the sun rose and set and rose and set again and again. Sometimes the father came home and sometimes he did not. Edward's ears became soggy and he did not care. His sweater had almost completely unravelled and it didn't bother him. He was hugged half to death and it felt good. In the evenings at the hands of Bryce, at the ends of the twine, Edward danced and danced. One month passed and then two and then three. Sarah Ruth got worse. In the fifth month, she refused to eat. And in the sixth month, she began to cough up blood. Her breathing became ragged and uncertain, as if she was trying to remember in between breaths what to do, what breathing was. Breathe, honey, Bryce stood over her and said. Breathe, thought Edward, from deep inside the well of her arms. Please, please, breathe. Bryce stopped leaving the house. He sat at home all day and held Sarah Ruth in his lap and rocked her back and forth and sang to her on a bright morning in September. Sarah Ruth stopped breathing. Oh no, said Bryce. Oh honey, take a little breath, please. Edward had fallen out of Sarah Ruth's arms the night before and she had not asked for him again. So face down on the floor, arms over his head, Edward listened as Bryce wept. He listened as the father came home and shouted at Bryce. He listened as the father wept. You can't cry, Bryce shouted. You got no right to cry. You never even loved her. You don't know nothing about love. I loved her, said the father. I loved her. I loved her too, thought Edward. I loved her and now she is gone. How could this be, he wondered. How could he bear to live in a world without Sarah Ruth? The yelling between the father and son continued and then there was a terrible moment when the father insisted that Sarah Ruth belonged to him and that she was his girl, his baby, and that he was taking her to be buried. She ain't yours, Bryce screamed. You can't take her. She ain't yours. But the father was bigger and stronger and he prevailed. He wrapped Sarah Ruth in the blanket and carried her away. The small house became very quiet. Edward could hear Bryce moving around, muttering to himself. And then finally, the boy picked Edward up. Come on, Jangles, Bryce said. We're leaving. We're going to Memphis. Chapter 20